Alabama Congressman Jerry Carl was at the State of the Union address last night. And he joins me on the phone now. Congressman Carl, you're on the House Armed Services Committee. So let's start with what's on everyone's mind this morning, which is the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And uh, you've been kind of critical of the president saying that he has not done enough soon enough. I'm wondering what your <coughs> thoughts are this morning. Well, my, my thoughts have not changed. He's still, we should have started this 60 or 90 days ago. Not waited, not waited until after the invasion itself. That, that's been my critical uh, point on it. But you know, <clears throat> last night, what we saw, I, I was really it startled me when I saw him when he walked in. He looked so weak and fragile that that it, it really startled me. I I see how he's aged in a year, and it's um, it's quite striking when you um, you know they had him all make up, you know, so he. would it looked good on TV, of course, but it's just brittle, real brittle. You know, last so, night was about polling issues. I don't care how you spin it. Uh, he basically tried to touch on uh, the issues that he's polling real bad on uh, because last night was about, you know, the Democrats in 2022, the election that's coming up in November. So he tried to put a positive spin on things like unemployment rate and COVID and fuel prices and uh, trying to give us a, a positive spin. And it, it didn't didn't go over very well. I, I didn't think it did. I thought he did a fair job, but but his message was not there. Representative Carl, I'm I have to say, what you started out with this morning, uh, being critical of the president's appearance, kind of shocks me because right now under a we're under a very critical situation with the Ukraine, uh, with the situation in Ukraine and Russia, and a time when actually even Senator Shelby said we need to show unity and strength. You're being critical of the president's appearance. I, quite, quite frankly, stuns me that you would start out this morning with something like that. Why would you even go in that direction at a time when the country needs to show strength on its leaders? Darwin, we need strong leaders right now. We don't need weak leaders. We need people that can step up and make decisions and, and play offense and quit having to play defense. We did it in Afghanistan. Now we're doing it here. We've got wide open borders. We've got to find some way of forcing this president to do his job. What would you do? And, and what would you do? What would, what would I do? Yeah, what, what, uh, well, you're in the Armed Services done, Committee, so tell me what you would do, sir. Armed Services Committee has, has got no jurisdiction over what the president does. No, but, but, but I'm don't, asking don't you what you would do. For that. <clears throat> what I would have done is 90 days ago, I would have started telling Putin what we were doing. Don't get on national TV. You don't have to do that, mm -hmm. but you do, do need to <clears throat> start letting him know we're going to shut down airspace. We're going to cut your cash flow off. You know, the Ukraine may not be in, in, in the uh, uh, NATO, but we're going, we're going to help them. We're going to arm them. We're going to do what we're going to do and try to keep this from escalating and getting where it's at. How, how but, much? But we don't. Go ahead, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, how much, and you are privy to this information, how unified is Europe and the United States and NATO uh, against this aggression? How, how unified are they and how much are they working together behind the scenes? They're getting much better. <clears throat> I, you know, my, my critic, the, the only critical country that I've had over there has been uh, Germany. I thought Germany should have stepped up quicker. Uh, you know, they should have, uh, we, we should have a nest egg built up over there with a, what is it called, a, a uh, GD, GD, GAC or CGA or whatever the numbers are, where, where they put up their 2.5% of the CDG, and we just we don't have it. So now the Americans are having to pay out of pocket again for another war. And we're all, I mean, the Ukraine is, is on all of our minds, and we're doing everything we can do to scramble to try to get it from escalating and going any further because it will spill all over into Europe. But again, what I'm talking about is leadership. Leadership should be able to identify that and have yourself surrounded by people. I mean, the intel that they shared with, with me, mm -hmm. I would have done that 90 days ago. I, I was confused why we kept waiting and waiting and waiting. Let me ask you a question about China and Taiwan, mm -hmm. because that is on our minds as well. Uh, Xi Ping is not Putin. They seem to be taking a more measured approach, even though they are saber rattling themselves. Do you see that as a similar situation, or is there a big difference between the two? I think China is a little more uh, tactful. <clears throat> I think China is is uh, is almost trying to um, they're, they're weighing this out. They're they're seeing where it's going. 
they're, they're going to they're going to see how the president responds. They're going to see how Russia responds. They're they're weighing it out. They're watching every move, and, yep. and that's that's who's benefiting the most from this whole. It's not Russia. It's not Ukraine. It's certainly not America. The Chinese are 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 the ones benefiting the most from this. Let's talk about uh, the economy. It was something you've been very critical of the president about, uh, the president p painting a picture of being more optimistic and also doing more to increase production in this country of certain goods that we need to actually progress. Uh, that sounds like something that you'd be on board with, but did you feel like he laid out a blueprint to how to get it done? No. I didn't hear that last night. I heard a lot of rhetoric. I heard what we should do, what we need to do. Uh, you know, what he wants to do, but I, I didn't hear how to do it. I've not seen how to do it. I mean, <clears throat> he's talking about lowering prescription costs, ceiling, ceiling the cost of insulin. Well, that's a great idea. I'm all for it. I've been in pharmacy business most of my life. But the reality is that there's not profit left in it. You sell it at a price, there's no profit. Everybody gets out of it. So you got to be careful. You know, work's got consequences up here. you got to be careful when you say you're going to sell something at $35 a vial. Well, do you even know if there's any profit left at $35, uh, $35 per vial? Mm. I don't know, but I think he needs to be a little more careful when he talks, starts talking about sealing stuff and uh, capping the cost of something. I just I don't think that's a good way to govern. Uh, one more question quickly here. Funding the police, and that's something he came out aggressively on last night, actually something that he has supported apparently throughout his, uh, his career. Uh, and that's something that a lot of uh, the Democrats have been wanting to defund the police. At least that's been the phrase that's been used over the past uh, several years. Do you take comfort in the fact that the president could be leading his party in the direction of increasing funding of the police departments across the nation and, and other law enforcement? Actually, yes, I do. I mean, that was one, one of the many things that I stood up and applauded him on. What I was a little disappointed is he, was, he wanted to talk about educating police and he focused on, on law enforcement's shortcomings, but he didn't talk about criminals. He didn't talk about what we need to do more on the criminal side, how we make, you know, how we need to adjust some of our justice system itself, not not just law enforcement. But I was very pleased to hear him say that he wanted to fund police. We all are. I mean, that's that should be a, a, a given. All right. Representative Jerry Carl from Mobile, thank you for sharing some time with us this morning. I know it was a late night for you last night in Mo Mobile. You know Mardi Gras here has been a late night for everyone. So, uh, hopefully oh yeah, we'll well, I'm up in red dress, ready to go. You know, and a meeting here in about 20 minutes. I figured you were. All right, sir. Well, thank you so much, and we'll be checking with you. I'm sure later today as well. T take care, darling. You too, Jerry.